fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. Today another beautiful journey in my creative world. I present you the witch shelter. This is the first part guys but uh, please be sure to watch it till the end because I'm sure that in this episode you will uh, do like a wow a couple of times at least okay because I want to show you some uh, amazing and innovative techniques for speed up the process. I am not a professional crafter, but I am a passionate one. So mm, I'm pretty sure that we will enjoy this. Before start, guys, I want to say thanks. Thank you guys to all of you. Thanks for your support. Thanks because this community is amazing. I want to say that, uh, yeah, I'm proud of you guys. I'm very proud. Now let's uh, start this uh, amazing journey. In uh, this uh, first part we will arrive till the roof of the shelter itself. But uh, an entire environment will be made on this uh, little uh, series, okay? At least a couple of episodes, maybe three. Crack on! Here we are again, guys. The first part of this video concerns the construction of a brick wall pattern which will be used to create a silicone mold. The idea is to use the elastic properties of the resin a few minutes before it completely solidifies to bend the wall and build a small tower in just an instant. The idea of this witch shelter comes from a whole series of old horror films. The setting will be a lugubrious marsh, a swamp full of details. The project describes a place of ancient ruins, in the center of which stands an old and decrepit tower, the last remaining fragment of an ancient and mysterious context. Pay attention, this mold is not only designed to be used uh, as a whole piece, but also contains at least two or three possible patterns to be divided according to the needs. By covering everything with PVA glue, we make sure to make the XPS foam solid enough to withstand the cloning process. This fine sand is used instead of sodium bicarbonate, equally useful for the purpose and equally economical. It's very cheap. Sand or bicarbonate have a dual function here. First of all, to enter the cracks and create the mortar effect between the bricks. Moreover, having sprinkled the entire wall of PVA glue, we increase the texture of the stone for a pleasant final rough effect. Here you see me create the molds and clone the wall with my usual technique. Check my series on molding and resin casting to learn more about this topic.
Now you see that I checked the solidification state of the resin. You have to remove the piece from the mold before it is completely rigid. Using the cardboard roll as a base, I wrapped the steel soft resin. I help myself with scotch paper to hold the piece in place while solidifying completely. Ten minutes later, the game is done. Now I will settle it with a little hot glue and I will camouflage the junction with some dust. It is important to model the air drag lie in order to hide the joint. For this I use a special silicone tool, very useful for this purpose. Now I recover the original wall and I tear it to pieces in order to get another part of my building and speed up the building process. This door is a clone of my doors of the town fortifications, another beautiful series that you cannot miss on this channel. I made the small canopy with cardboard and the shingles are made of XPS foam.
I still use Ebra clay to hide the joints between the portions of the building and uh, add some texture with aluminum foil. Now I use a thicker cardboard roll for the top of the building. See how I proceed without a precise scheme, using what I have on hand from time to time as a reference. The idea is to complete the building with a small upper floor. Create the wooden floor and uh, use one of my resin hatches, since I have it uh, on my hand, to guarantee access to the upper floor. I then added all the wooden beams in the style of half-timbered houses. Here too you can see how I proceed without a precise scheme, simply cropping from time to time the details I'm going to create. To learn more about this technique, I recommend you my video tutorial number 40.
Now the roof. Here I show you another amazing technique, useful for the roofs in ruined wooden shingles. First, we deal with the support made from uh, a cardboard folded and cut into a cone. The construction of the roof is very fast. It is a matter of gluing strips of shingles in XPS foam in more or less circular ways. Do not worry too much about the regularity of positioning. The important thing is to cover the whole roof with strips with a wood grain texture. Once the roofing work is complete, we will use our X-Acto knife to scud the individual shingles. We always use the blade from the top down and don't worry too much if some pieces will be torn off. This is perfect for a roof with shingles in ruin. With a little patience, the final result is fantastic. Hello fellow crafters and welcome to Max DM Crafting. This is the video that I like the most. I am just improvising during the building process and uh, as you can see this uh, brown sheet is uh, just a foam sheet that I like to use. You can cut it very easily and uh, you can write on it. I had an idea about this swamp and uh, this was just a quick attempt to put on the paper my idea. These are uh, foam pieces that I cut with my hot wire cutter and uh, as you can see I put them uh, around because I wanted to create actually a container for the resin. So all around there will be some uh, you know pieces for contain the resin.
I know in this moment everything seems too, you know, too straight, too linear, too clean, but uh, going forward you can see that I'm using some hard ray clay and I will sculpt around all the piece for uh, improve and make the swamp more credible, more real, more uh, creepy. On the inside and on the outside, everywhere, where I put the air dry clay, I go with some uh, PVA glue and then with some uh, silicone tools, I'm modeling the clay. I want to blend the pieces together. At the end, I just cover everything with some PVA glue for help to impermeabilize the piece and also to clean it up a little bit. Till now, this is what we reach and uh, I'm pretty glad. Those rocks in the center are perfect for sustain some uh, dangerous wooden bridge. Now details. These are pieces from Warhammer Fantasy. This one was from the Arachnarok Spider. These are from the Fortified Manor. This one is one bridge that I already built. Some uh, tweaks and as you will know I use some uh, three stamps from Green Stuff World. Those are haunted. And again, just putting in place and cutting, drawing, I'm speeding up the process when I can. This front part is for, uh, you know, the path that will uh, arrive directly from the board. So we need a little ramp here made of rocks and grass and stuff like that. And uh, while I'm going on, I'm just adding details, guys. This piece of foam in three seconds, it's just another tree stump. You see, I create the wooden grain on the sides and then some rings. This is a perfect tree stump. Without any fear, I started to cut my details, to cut my pieces for reach the desired shape. Yeah, without any mercy. Cut, cut! And then it's just a matter of taste. I wanted uh, something very detailed, but also very chaotic, very, you know, messy. Because uh, when you go in a swamp, usually you don't have, you know, a clear path. And uh, if you have too clean environment, is uh, quite too much beautiful. And you don't want that. You want chaos, you want dirty, you want a lot of details. The idea is that in each corner, I have the, you know, chance to add a lot of details and create some micro environments. So in the third episode, we will uh, add details and we will flock in different ways every single part of this swamp. So this one, it's the, basically the entrance. So we need a ramp, we need a haunted tree stump. You see, this one is beautiful with these faces, scary as hell. I like it very much, very creepy. And then hard dry clay for fill the junction and uh, close the gaps. I like to put it uh, very dry, at least 50-50% uh, dry and with a little bit of water. And then I finish it up with some uh, PVA glue.
This will ensure on one hand that you smooth all the junction and on the other hand that at the end the clay will be very very sturdy, very very resistant. I placed uh, pieces of you know fences here and there like you know fragments from the past. Once upon a time this was not a swamp. Also when you add some fences on your piece you have the feeling that actually you are crossing a line, you are passing a border, so who knows what can happen there. Create the right feeling for enter a you know, dangerous place. It's very important that you pre-made some texture with, with some uh, tools, so you will uh, have less difficulties later. In this corner I'm creating a little graveyard. Couple of tombs, couple of you know gravestones, couple of skulls, a dry tree. I'm uh, connecting uh, real pieces of wood with some uh, hot glue for increase the texture and uh, it's a nice and fast way to create some dry environment, some dry trees. With a pin I ensure that uh, it will be very stable on the piece and that's it. I made uh, all the trees like that on this piece as you can see. A combination between hot glue, air dry clay and uh, PVA glue at the end for uh, protect and uh, reinforce all the piece. You see? This was uh, a very clean bridge. I need it uh, to be very ruined so I start to chop off pieces and you see I'm, I'm doing a lot of damage on it so we can add pieces and it will be very very blended with the entire environment this will be a dangerous path I'm just checking the position you see and Without plan guys, just putting pieces that I have on my hands, this is very very fast. All this uh, creation, uh, this swamp was a couple of hours of work, not more. And this is a great sign, it reminds me a lot the Blair Witch project, you know? Yeah, nice. This is from the Arachnarok uh, Giant Spider, you know, from uh, Games Workshop uh, Warhammer Fantasy. And that's it. This is a, a project that needs uh, a lot of dry time. So it's very important that you understand when to create stuff and when you to put uh, your piece to dry before the next step. As you can see I put uh, some pins for uh, avoid the warping of the piece during the dry time. And I'm adding some hard dry clay again around the shelter itself for guarantee the perfect uh, conjunction and avoid the gaps between the pieces. And this is uh, the final step, it's one of my favorite steps actually, because with this uh, combination of Mod Podge and black acrylic paint and water, you protect your piece, you prepare it for uh, the painting process and everything is coming up together. You need to be sure that uh, you reach every hidden spot. And then everything is black. And we start to feel some uh, creepy vibes on this uh, environment. As you can see, everything is coming together now. It's very, very, it's a moment very nice and very pleasant.
something is waiting for you. You need to cross that bridge, but the sign on the left is very terrifying. Who dares to enter the witch shelter? So guys, the most important thing is to understand that uh, your base code is very important for the final effect. For this reason, I'm uh, choosing uh, 5 or 4 shades of green for uh, give uh, to the piece a depth and uh, a color that I like for the final effect. I was thinking nature, but also mud. Also, you know, the green is the color of the fear. So it's very important that uh, this base code was uh, mostly green. It's incredible how you can reach the final depth of your piece just shading it with uh, the right touch with your uh, brush. Don't worry too much about the brush strokes on the pool because uh, then I will use a hairbrush for uh, the final effect. But as you can see, I put green everywhere, also on the rocks, the bricks. This will give, uh, you know, an unity to all the piece. The highlight is almost yellow, as you can see. At the end, if you want, you can call this piece also finished, just with the green shades. As you can see, I'm uh, also putting this yellowish green on the bricks for the shelter. On the shingles, even. Then I repass with some uh, medium gray all the rocks that I want to see also at the end after the flocking. So I'm not bothering too much about the rocks uh, that I will cover. I'm just touching the rocks for uh, the final effect. Then flocking. Guys, basically this piece is colored by flocking. I'm not using uh, much color. I'm just using a lot of different flocks. Green dust, brown dust, then a couple of tonality of uh, static grass. And basically all this process is going on centimeter by centimeter, inch by inch. As you can see under the trees I'm also putting some uh, dry leaves from Green Stuff World. It's quite messy, this is the reason why I'm uh, basically keeping my piece on this uh, rough uh, piece of wood.
the airbrush has the great power to blend all the pieces together. I'm just using a brown now, then uh, a olive green, a dark green basically, for uh, blending the effect uh, in the deep part of the pool. Then I'm uh, repassing all the wood with some brown and also I'm using the white for uh, speeding up the lightening of some pieces, for example the skulls and uh, the stucco. Now it's time for the resin. This is a compound that needs 100 grams of component A and 60 grams of component B. And actually I'm putting two or three times the same quantity of resin for filling all the pool. All the swamp must be covered. Till this point all my you know, base was quite soft but very waterproof so resin will not escape from the swamp and at the end the piece will be very very hard very very strong as you can see i'm searching the right color here using some green then some blue at the end also some uh, brown don't bother too much if uh, your color seems not so transparent because uh, resin at the end will be in any case lucid so it will give you the desired water and wet effect Sorry for the airy arm here. When everything was dry, I removed the pins and with my utility knife, I just very carefully detached the pins. As you can see, it's very sturdy, very strong. Then was time for the water effects. I use this uh, model buster and uh, first of all I do some uh, ripples and some you know circular uh, waves because uh, in these swamps, in these lakes, little lakes you have always little animals, little stuff that are breathing. And then I finished everything with some uh, movement, very very light. Then was the moment for some detail and I had just a lantern with a little, uh, you know, cheap jewelry, as you can see, using uh, once again the airbrush, firstly for coating and then for uh, the, you know, light effect with some yellow. That's pretty much it.